and a very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lord with the CBC Evening News. In our top story tonight, Prime Minister Fernando Stewart has congratulated the new Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Alan Chastney, and his United Workers Party on the recent victory in the general elections there. Mr. Stewart noted that the people of St. Lucia had given him a clear mandate to carry out their desire for change and offered his best wishes for a productive and rewarding term in office. According to the Prime Minister, Barbados and St. Lucia as sister islands in the Eastern Caribbean have enjoyed a long-standing and close relationship. He pointed to cooperation at various levels, including economic, environmental, social and cultural activities within government and the private sector, as well as people-to-people -people exchanges. Well, a major financial injection in the Barbados economy, Sandals Resort is expanding its hotel on the south coast to bring its total investment to just over a quarter of a billion Barbados dollars while employing an additional 1,700 people. The current Sandals Hotel in Barbados consists of 280 rooms and cost a hefty sum, with the price tag being put at 65 million U.S. dollars. Now this is being improved upon with a 14-acre expansion at Maxwell Coast Road in Christchurch, encompassing an additional 222 rooms, bringing the total room stock to 580 and the overall investment to 245 million US dollars. This means Sandals is shelling out an additional 180 million US dollars on the project, which will bring employment for 1,700 people in Barbados. It is estimated that close to 50 local contractors will be employed at the hotel to help in its construction, tiling, aesthetics and electrical work, among other things. Some of the major businesses that are benefiting from the hotel's construction are C. O. Williams, Size, Williams Electrical, Jada, Shelbury, and Connoisseur Designs. Speaking this morning at the official groundbreaking ceremony, Chief Executive Officer of Sandals, Adam Stewart, says providing jobs for locals is part of the planning. In the new expansion, we will add some 520 new jobs to the site we're standing on here today. And on those 520, there will be 60 different disciplines that we will train uh, and develop too. Minister of Tourism Richard Seeley is happy that Sandals is expanding its resort. And he dismissed suggestions that guests at Sandals are not leaving the property. In fact, he says businesses in the surrounding areas have benefited from the resort. There's ample evidence in St. Lawrence Gap and elsewhere that... that uh, that the guests, while they do have a, a package that is convenient for them to enjoy the amenities on property, that they do go off property and they will continue to do that. And so the impact can be felt throughout the St. Lawrence area, the Maxwell area, and even further afield. I can speak, for example, of the golf course at Durance that has gotten uh, a lot of business from the Sandals property and will get even more now that um, that we have these additional suites coming on stream. The project will take just under a year and a half to complete and is expected to be finished by the end of November next year. Well, with tourism and international businesses playing a part in economic recovery, there is optimism that a third player, alternative energy, can be added to the mix. This view was expressed by Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Dila Wuerl. He says all the power needed can be produced through renewable energy sources. In Barbados's case, we can generate all the electricity the country could possibly need from solar and wind energy. In the last few years, we have seen the introduction locally of affordable photovoltaic systems for households. You can now buy a system that will supply your entire electricity needs, reducing your average monthly payment to Barbados Light and Power to Zero for less than half the price of a new standard size four-door family saloon. You can obtain financing from banks, credit unions, and other financial institutions for the purchase on terms that are affordable. Dr. Wells says the country stands to benefit in many ways with the development of its renewable energy sector, which can see it saving millions. 
solar and wind generation had been in place last year, Barbados would have saved about $209 million in fuel imports. And if, in addition, all cars, buses, trucks, construction, machinery, etc. were powered exclusively by electricity, we would have saved another $182 million. And in all, we would have reduced our import bill by 15%. In 2014, when the oil, bill, when the oil price was higher, uh, we would have reduced it by 20%. Two brothers have been remanded to prison for the murder of a city businessman last month. 28-year-old Chris Avian Amal Lord and 20-year-old Adisa Dion Mitchell appeared before Magistrate Douglas Frederick in the District A Magistrate's Court this morning. Lisa Broom tells us more. It was a brief appearance for the two brothers who are accused of killing businessman Colin Ford on May 10th. Lord and Mitchell remained silent in the dock of Criminal Court No. 1 during the short proceedings. They spoke only to identify themselves to Magistrate Douglas Frederick and to indicate that neither of them had a lawyer. The two, both of 2nd Avenue, Thomas Gap, President Kennedy Drive, St. Michael, were not required to plead to the indictable charge. They will return to court on July 6th. Ford, who operated Collins Sports Bar and Lounge on Baxter's Road, was sitting outside of his business place around half past seven in the evening when he was accosted and shot by two assailants. He later died in hospital. Lisa Broom, CBC News. Well, coming up, excitement as the Bashment Soka semi-finalists prepare for competition. Don't let your data experience slow you down. Step up to Digicel. Barbados is fast as 4G network. More than twice as fast as the slow network. Get more with Digicel. Digicel, the fastest 4G network in Barbados. Dial star 153 number sign to sign up to Digicel today. They are best friends. They share everything. Experiences, moments, and adventures. They're always together. Protect them with Klim One Plus from Nestle. It's the only growing up milk with Prebio One to help protect them from gastrointestinal diseases. Your instinct is to love and protect him. Klim will do the same. Nestle. Good food, good life. Distributed by Massey Distribution. Are you positive? You are negative. HIV free. Are you positive? You are negative. Get tested and see. Are you positive? You are negative. Are you okay? Are you positive? You are negative. Get tested today. Regional HIV testing day is Friday, June 24th, and free testing is available at these locations so you can know your status. In addition, free testing and counseling is available at these locations and times. A full list of testing sites can be found on the iLiveUp.info website. Regional Testing Day, for nine years an initiative of the Caribbean Broadcast Media Partnership, supported by PANCAP and Scotiabank. Are you positive? You are negative. The Education Ministry is preparing to step up its focus regarding the teaching of science, technology, engineering and mathematics or STEM subjects within the primary schools. Chief Education Officer Karen Best says the ministry is having discussions on redefining the role of maths and science by introducing specialist teachers. Because um, if we are going to move forward, raise the, the, the average in our mathematics, and also at the end of the secondary school to produce um, the entrepreneurs and the, and the, um, the, leader. the leaders, of the, the, the innovators, that's the word I'm looking for, then we have to start right down at the level of the primary schools. 
And Education Minister Ronald Jones also gave an update on plans for a new secondary school over at Searles in Christchurch. He says it is expected to start early next year. That school should have been already constructed, but there have been challenges along the way which I would not go into. There have been challenges, but I think that there's light at the tunnel, hopefully within uh, another two or so months. We should be able to hire the consultants, the architect, quality engineers, and those to start um, doing the drawings and, and all of that for that school, along with two or three primary schools which need major work. Students at the St. Cyprian's Boys School continued to celebrate their results from the common entrance exam. CBC News visited that Britain's Crossroads School and was met with excitement from the class of 30 boys. Now more than 80% of them will be heading to the older secondary schools. The class top student is also its youngest, 9-year-old Jaden Greenwich. Jaden received 91 in English and 98 in maths, and he along with four of his classmates will be heading to Harrison College from September. Jaden, the self-proclaimed football star, says he is extremely satisfied with where he will be going to school. Very excited. I, I know that most of the smart people in Barbados have gone there. Even though other people don't consider it to be the best school, I consider it to be the best school. And principal at St. Cyprian's Dave Lane says this year's results continue to be consistent with recent years. We are very elated with um, the results. We have 90% of the class attaining allocation into the older secondary schools. The bulk of them um, between Harrison College and Queen's College, 15 to be exact. When asked about Jaden, Mr. Lane says Jaden has come through the school working exceedingly well, being the dominant performer in all of his classes, and he also confirmed Jaden's skills on the playing field. He is an avid football um, fan, enthusiast. He's a big Bayern Munich fan, Philip Lamb to be exact. He plays right back for the school, and he has been doing so with a pump. Um, he is he's small in stature, but he, he has a big heart and a big drive. He, he will do that. Well, it's the first time that several of the semi-finalists in the Barbados Yellow Pages Bashment Soccer Competition have ever been in a competition of any kind. As expected, they are excited and have their minds on set on reaching the finals along with some other plans. The youngest semi-finalist is Farmer Ubu. The 21-year-old is happy to have made it to his first competition with his song, Gal Factory. Undaunted by his age, he intends to show naysayers a Bashman Soko song doesn't have to be degrading. I've been hearing a lot of people giving a lot of negative reviews about uh, what they think Bashman Soko is and where it's going. I, as an artist, as I said, I've been around music from a very young age and I know what Bashman Soko is. And people don't think, you to think about songs like Gadong by Lil Rick when they think about Bashman Soko, which is also a Bashman Soko song. What makes Bashman Soka Bashman Soka is that unique um, bass line and also the boom tick tick sort of vibe. Once you add that to anything, it becomes Bashman Soka. The trio as man is also happy with the news and intends to continue pushing Barbadian culture and its music along with a subgenre known as fling. Fling includes singing and flowing in Barbadian dialect over rhythmic beats. One of the group's members, Dwayne Gibbs, says its offering for this year on was not tailored specifically with this competition in mind. But this year we decided, let us make a Bashman Soka song. And this is before we even knew about the competition, so it's just a, a major coincidence that these two things happen to coincide. Lady Essence was also surprised by the announcement, especially after the original music video for her collaboration with Ramesses Brown got several blows. Well, excited and overwhelmed because after the controversy with the song, I was a little doubtful, honestly, about it then. But when I hear semi finals, I was like, yeah. So, excited. For Stiffy and Mole at the moment, the plan is simply to reach the finals with their song. Uh, I feel really excited. It's, it's a good feeling. This is the first time I've been actually in a competition of this magnitude, so it's very, very good. Well, the plan is to push the song more and 
plan out the perform a strategy and basically get all the fans knowing the song by the time it comes for me to perform. A great feeling, a lot of joy, a lot of excitement. Yeah. Can't wait to compete. So it's a great feeling. Now from here is to execute and win this competition. Linsky is however seeking to push his song bend and pick up and be accompanying that. Before it was any competition, it don't take that the rotation was that heavy, but now everybody on panic and know your rotation is very important for a track, especially when you're in a competition. Because people got to know the track. Got to be familiar, they gotta get familiar with the dancing. The six other semi-finalists are Marsville, Skrilla, Porgy and Murder, Cooper Dan, and Jaguar the Champ. You can help your favorite artists reach the finals by voting for them via WhatsApp at 289-0040 or on the Bashman Soka 246 Facebook page. Sean Farrell, CBC News. Well, if you thought the One Love concert was a one-off event, think again. The event is back again this year, and organizers are promising bigger and better things at its new venue, the Concord Experience. Creative director with Volume Entertainment, Leah Gajada, says the first event last year managed so to make a huge impact, attracting significant local, regional and international media and coverage. Experience. One Love 2015 saw a memorable performance by an all-star cast of Caribbean and international artists, a live stream to a global audience of over 40,000 viewers, more than 300 media mentions in outlets worldwide, and an unscripted performance by Rihanna. We think we brought it. Ms. Gajara says this year the bar will be raised as they join in celebrating the island's upcoming 50th independence anniversary under the theme Legacy. You can expect an upgrade in our services, design and energy. Our focus in 2015 was on stage presentation and performance. For 2016, it's about your experience. You do not want to miss One Love 2016. And if you may be concerned about the new location, venue director with Volume Entertainment Matthew Laurie says there's no need to worry. This year it's going to be it's going to be a mixture of inside and out. We're more mainly focusing on the outside of the of the venue, huh? Um, but. It is a bit challenging, the difference between the two. Kensington is a completely different venue. We have different restrictions in place at Kensington as opposed to at the Concord experience. But I'm capable of setting up a venue as special as this in a way that you would know that you are the difference between the Kensington or at One Love at the Concord experience because it's going to be, it's going to be phenomenal. The full lineup of artists is yet to be revealed, but Michelle Montano and King Baba are on the cards. Well, I'm excited for One Love, part two, second year. I had a great time last year. It was a fantastic show, and I'm looking forward to matching up the stage this year. Too much vibes to miss. I can't miss One Love this year, man. The second One Love concert will be held on July 31st. And still to come, a look at some of the stories making headlines across our region.